This is the 10 Minute Contrarian Podcast. This is VP. We are a solutions based podcast diving into the world of contrarian investing and alternative finance. You can find us hosted on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, nonsenseforex.com, and podcast players everywhere. Episode 31 is brought to us by markets.com. I'm a simple man. Give me MT4, give me great customer service. I'm pretty good. But a lot of you are a lot smarter than I am, and if somebody gives you great tools to use and leverage, you like to take advantage of those things. This is where Markets.com comes in. They have a great, robust, proprietary trading platform that they use. You can use MT4 and MT5, and you can also use TradingView here, which I know is very popular with many of you. But even if you want to stick to MT4, there are very few things you cannot chart on Markets.com. So many currency pairs, so many different stocks. And check this out. Like always, click the link in the show notes, which will take you to the blog, which will get you all up to date on everything you need to know about markets.com. Click that link, and you will always have a native English-speaking customer service rep at your service. Or, if you choose, have somebody in Spanish, Italian, German, or Arabic. And you can translate the entire website into one of those languages as well, if you choose. So if you like having options, and who doesn't, my top recommendation for anybody outside of the United States is markets.com. If you are inside of the United States, you know I already have a great broker for you. Check the show notes for that as well. It is the 10-Minute Contrarian Podcast. And uh, be glad I don't care about numbers a whole lot, because episodes like this will kill your numbers. (laughs) You know, it seems that nobody cares about oil, which is really weird. On Twitter, I even just proposed a question. Say, if you had X amount of money gifted to you and you could put it into one commodity, what would that commodity be? And I was really happy to get an array of answers, a lot of gold, a lot of silver, uranium, copper, things like that. And it was pretty evenly spread across the board, but almost nobody said oil. And week after week, episode 15, when we talk about investing in the pure price of oil, didn't do really great compared to the other episodes. So even amongst the contrarians, being bullish on oil and acting upon it is a contrarian play. I love it. But I also get it. As a pure play, it doesn't quite have the upside a lot of other commodities do. It doesn't quite have the asymmetry that a lot of other commodities have. But understand, too, that not everything we talk about is going to have those levels of asymmetry. Platinum, for example... You know, if platinum goes up 30 40% this year, that's a giant win for us. And while that may not excite everybody, if you compare the upside to the potential downside, it's an investment I really like, and I feel the same way about oil. Now, now you got to be a little more cautious on oil. I would say you need to set a stop loss somewhere. Uh, maybe not a hard one, but a soft one to where you say, okay, if it gets down to this point, I'm going to bail and then come back in later. Because as we've seen in the past, crazy things can happen. Now, we will talk about things like stop losses in a future episode. Um, That's going to be in the near future, not next week near future, but probably real soon after that. Uh, But understand, too, you don't just have to play the price of oil. You can take the asymmetry up a notch. There are ETFs that invest in oil services and oil producers. And typically, as the price of oil goes up, especially on a long-term basis... These things go up more, quite a bit more. And the majority of them, in my view, are trading at quite a discount. Now, why is this? Well, when President Biden does things like shut down an entire oil pipeline, this doesn't really affect the price of oil negatively. If anything, it makes it more scarce and eventually takes it to the upside. But things like that really do crush the producers and the services industry. Back in 2017, when we decided the whole world was going to go green. You know, what did that do to the price of oil long term? Not a whole lot, really, but all of the other companies associated with oil got absolutely murdered because funds were taking their money out of the oil sector and putting them into the green sector. We have never seen anything like this before. For the first time in a long time, Oil, something we absolutely depend on to such a degree that you don't even really understand how much we need it until it's super scarce and you can't have access to it. It is so directly correlated to our way of life. But for the first time really in history, oil became super unloved. Now, recently the tides have started to turn and a lot of those ESG 
ETFs and companies have gotten a lot of money taken out of them. Go look at the charts. And so most of that money should have gone back into the oil sector, right? Nope. A little bit did, but not much. Now, did it make these companies any less important than they are right now? No. They're extremely important. It just made them unloved, and it gave investors like us a very handsome discount. And we've already had a bit of an energy crisis, especially in Europe, and I think it's going to get a lot worse. I think we've only seen the beginning. And the media is scrambling to paint a narrative as to why it's happening, but please understand, and we've called this from the beginning, world government stupidity is the reason why this crisis exists. Picking the wrong horse, and getting very rich off of it, by the way, and all the virus shutdowns have set us so far behind that in a very short amount of time, we have gone from perfectly fine into an energy crisis. I don't make a lot of predictions on here, but I predict that this is really going to be a thing. And you can just sit back and watch it and deal with the after effects. Or you can get your money down on some of these oil companies. Because when the world finally realizes that there really is no other choice, and I think they already kind of know that, they're just not broadcasting this because by doing that, they would be admitting that they're wrong about everything they've squawked about for the last five years. But like I said, behind the scenes, it's already happening. And all of these companies are having a bit of a renaissance now, as you can already see on the charts. And I don't know about you, but as far as commodities and crypto go, I don't really see anything else approaching bullish territory on the weekly chart except for oil. So let's do something about it, shall we? Solutions. Uh, Even though I had to rant about the problem, you know, energy is just not something you tamper with like that. And Western governments have done this for their own personal gain, and it's going to suck. So let's find a higher leveraged, higher asymmetry way to profit off of this suckiness, shall we? I mean, what else are you going to do? Now, there are two main sectors I want you to pay attention to. There is oil services and there is oil producers. The producers are going to be more like the, uh, the people who own the, the gas stations that you normally see. And services can be any array of things that go into the overall ecosystem of transporting and processing oil and gas. So the two ETFs I wanted to start with, and these are going to be North American ETFs, are from iShares. And anytime you hear me say iShares, that also means BlackRock. So you will almost never have any issues with being undercapitalized or having low liquidity. Now, I'm going to put both of these in the show notes for you so you can kind of see the difference between services and production. Because by doing it this way, you're going to be able to see head-to-head two different ETFs from the same issuer. So you're going to have ticker symbol IEO, which is going to be producers, and then IEZ, which is going to be services. And then you can go into these sites and look at their holdings so you can get a better understanding of exactly what you're getting into. Now, if you really don't care about those types of fundamentals and it's all the same to you, if you want to look at a three-year chart on the weekly, you're going to see two very different scenarios. IEO is breaking out of its three-year highs which is kind of weird because oil itself is not. Uh, So that certainly could be something. To where IEZ has quite a ways to go before it does hit those three-year highs. And if it does, you're looking at almost a 100% return. So different strokes for different folks. I can't really tell you which one is more intriguing. That is 100% up to you. Uh, But like I said before, options are great to have. Now, speaking of options, let me tell you an ETF that I'm not including, and some of you might be wondering why, and that's going to be one of the Spiders XLE, super popular, very big, and it's an energy ETF, but if you look under the hood, it's all oil, and I'll be honest, for an oil ETF that's not a direct play on the price of oil, this thing just moves too slow for me, and I know that I am a bit more of a conservative investor than many of you. And even I look at this thing, I'm like, eh, there's better options. Now, one of those better options is also a spider. And you have probably heard of it before. It is ticker symbol XOP. Now, we are staying with producers. And I think this is a good choice as well. One of the biggest things you will notice, though, is once you unwrap it and look at the holdings. This is very different from IEO. It is very, very equal weighted to where IEO is going to be a lot more top heavy. And you just have to decide which one is right for you. Uh, But those are going to be your top choices in the production category. Now, moving on to services. These things have been battered worse than the producers have, in my opinion. 
Um, but because of that, you may have more upside. You just may have to wait for it a bit longer. So you decide what's best for you here. Uh, but let's go ahead and stay with the spiders. There is one for oil services. It's just lesser known. It's ticker symbol XES. And once again, like BlackRock's IEZ, which I just gave you, IEZ is very, very top heavy to where XES is a lot more evenly distributed. So again, it's a personal choice here. Now, even though I've probably given you all enough to work with, let me go ahead and throw in one more uh, because it probably has the highest sex appeal out of anything we've talked about today. It's just really expensive, and that is going to be Van X offering in the services category, ticker symbol OIH. So when you're making your decision, throw that one in the mix as well. And understand, if you are getting a bullish signal on oil, all of these are probably going to go up. It really comes down to downside protection versus overall upside asymmetry. And every single one of you falls at different levels on the spectrum there. So I wanted to give you a vast array of options, uh, but still give you options that had a ton of liquidity in them already. Now, as always, UK, Europe, Australia, I never, ever forget about you, except that one time where I did, but it won't be this time. You have one solid option that I saw. There's other options out there, but they're not really pure play oil company ETFs. And these are both going to be in the production category. But in the UK, you're going to have ticker symbol SPOG. And in Australia, you're going to have ticker symbol FEUL. So look into those and see what you think. And look, at any given time, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, even though a lot of you... You know, you can figure this out. Some of these are pretty top heavy. Or a lot of times you see the same companies appear in every single one of these ETFs. You can just take a few of those companies, divide your investment three ways, invest in all three, and voila, you have your own personal ETF without the fees. So if you cannot access the ETFs, but you can access the companies, then you really have the same ability to participate just like everybody else. I know when I talk about ETFs, and I do it all the time, it can be a little bit painful for those outside of the United States and Canada, but it doesn't have to be. Now, I think everything we talk about on this podcast in terms of investment possibilities has a ton of sex appeal. It just depends on where on the spectrum it falls. I like things on the low end. I like things on the high end. And when it comes to ETFs like we just spoke about, I would say it probably falls somewhere between low and middle. Next week, we are rationing things up to the high end. I mean, this is like hardcore sex panther, rocket to the moon type stuff. So stay tuned for that, but please take these other types of investments very seriously. I am making sure I participate here. And if they succeed, I will be talking mountains of trash to everybody on Twitter who either did not act or elected not to listen to this episode in the first place. Because most people still haven't figured this out. They haven't figured out just how much we're going to need oil and how much of it is not there anymore because we stupidly forfeited it. Most people still think oil investors right now are crazy. But soon they won't. Because we're not crazy. We're just early. <laughs>